So hi everyone. So I'm going to present skin on interfaces, a bio-driven approach for artificial skin design to cover uh, interactive devices. So this work has been done with Gilles Bailly, Catherine Pellachot, Eric Le Collinet, Andrew Cohn and Andrew Do, we, we are researchers from Telecom Paris, Sorbonne University and University of Bristol. So I will start by, by saying like, the obvious, right? We, we are surrounded by devices and we use them to access information a lot, but most importantly, uh, we use them to communicate with others and they are pretty good for that actually. Uh, we interact with them through touch uh, thanks to their input surfaces so that they can detect touch position. However, this kind of input su surface is, is somehow limited. So it's rigid, it's smooth, it doesn't have texture. In the opposite, if, if you take the, the human skin, like the human arm here, uh, the skin is a sensing organ we are familiar with. Uh, it can sense also touch location and multi-touch, but it has also some depth and, 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 and some texture. And most importantly, it can, set, it can sense complex and expressive, uh, complex and expressive gestures like pinching or grabbing or stroking. So on the one hand, the skin is a great interface uh, that we are familiar with and that is really expressive. And on the, other, the, on the other hand, the devices are everywhere and they are great for mediated communication, but their input capabilities are somehow limited. So in this project, uh, we wanted to, to, to use the expressivity of the skin and to put it on uh, the existing devices. So that's uh, why we developed and created what we call skin-on interfaces. Skin-on interfaces are, are surfaces or artificial skin that, that looks and feel like uh, skin and that are capable to detect expressive gestures like we only do usually on human, like stroking or tickling. So they can, they can be used on a touchpad or they can also be used on a mobile device. The question I will answer in this presentation is how we went from the human skin uh, to the design of such interfaces. For that, uh, we follow uh, what we call a bio-driven approach. So this here is the, it's a cross section of skin. So starting from that, we try to try to systematically characterize the properties of the skin and try to reproduce it with the interactive system. So you can see it's composed of, of three main layers, right? You have the epidermis on top, the dermis, where we have all the nerves and, and the sensing, and also the hypodermis layer, which is more like the fat layer we have for the fat people, like I'm. I mean, so in, in this uh, project, we try to reproduce each layer and uh, that correspond to, to also the visual and, and, and tactile uh, aspect of the skin, the sensing layer, and what is, uh, what is kinesthetic, uh, kinesthetic replication and, and, and similarity. So in this presentation, I will explain uh, how, we'll, how we reproduce and how we created this interface. Uh, I will talk about the user studies we conducted, the fabrication method, and also the use cases. So, I will start right now with the user studies. So we had uh, three main uh, questions that motivated uh, this work and three main research questions. So to explore which factors impact the creation of a realistic skin, first, uh, we had to see how the visual aspect of the interface impacts uh, the perception. Uh, second, how the texture, the surface texture of such interface might impact the comfort when we touch it. And finally, how the thickness impacts uh, the comfort and also the expressivity that we can, that we can do. So to answer uh, this question, we did some small size samples uh, in silicone. So as for the color, uh, we picked different uh, pigmentation. As a baseline, some white and black uh, colors which are something like a device. We also picked something uh, like a skin uh, pigmentation, beige and brown, and also something more uh, vegetal or just something like different color. Um, as for the surface texture, uh, we picked a gradient from, uh, from something 
without any texture, so raw silicone to something really granular. So in between, uh, we have something similar to subtle fold and subtle wrinkles that we have in the, uh, in the skin. And finally, for the thickness, uh, we, we picked uh, several layers, uh, several th uh, thickness uh, thicknesses some, from something really thin, like uh, the, the thickness we have on the feet, to something uh, more like we have in the belly. So with all those samples, uh, we run a user study every time with uh, 16 different participants. And we, we ask them, uh, how, does it, how does it feel? How does it look? Is it comfortable to perform gesture on it? Does it look like human skin? And is it expressive? And so on. So the goal of this step was really to inform the design of uh, an artificial skin. So our result um, suggested first that uh, the skin-like colors pigmentation were looking more interactive. So that was something a bit unexpected because it's an interactive system. So we were expecting something like black or white was, most, was looking more interactive. Also, uh, participants uh, say that the, the wrinkles and the surface texture is really important uh, for the tactile perception and also the comfort of interaction. And a thickness of five millimeter to one centimeter uh, were also uh, something quite comfortable to perform a gesture on it. So it was a good compromise between something uh, expressive and, uh, and comfortable. So now that we have, we know the best factors to, to reproduce artificial skin with silicon, the next challenge was uh, the fabrication. So we analyzed in the literature, the HCR literature, which gesture are, are frequently used uh, to perform interaction on surfaces. So obviously we have everything related to the interface control, traditional like pointing and multi-touch. But also we're interested in the gesture uh, of emotional communication, like uh, tingly, tickling, stroking, or slapping. So with all those gestures in mind, we try to select the best uh, sensing uh, technique. So uh, we choose to use the mutual uh, capacitance sensing technique because this technique allows uh, to sense with a good accuracy and it can sense uh, single touch, multi-touch, and uh, with different resolutions. So we have that in mind. And then the next step uh, for us was to actually build it. So I looked at many HTI papers and I tried to reproduce it. And I totally failed uh, for most of them. So I tried with a uh, Conductive, uh, conductive silicone and conductive fabric. And it was, it was too difficult for me to make because I'm not an expert and also I didn't add all the, the material uh, and the hardware available. So I decided to, to, to do uh, something much more simple and something really do it yourself that could be reproduced easily by HTI researchers that don't have any skills. Uh, so, like me. Uh, so now I will explain how I did to, to design and build uh, the skin on interfaces in a really simple way. So first, I start by mixing some silicone, which is normal silicone, with some pigments. Then I pour it on top of a textured layer. So the blue thing here is just a texture that looks like a human, like a human skin. So I, I spread it in an even thickness of something around one millimeter because that's the, that the thickness of the, the epidermis of the human. So I try to reproduce that. And then to build the electrodes, I used uh, something commercially available. It's a conductive stretchable wire, which is really great because it has a good conductivity. And so I sew it in a, I, I, I position it in a grid pattern, basically. So here I have a, a grid to help me, but I can do it manually also. So the spacing between the electrode uh, have an impact on the tactile uh, acuity. Like for something like that, I have around, uh, I think, three millimeters of, of tactile acuity. So then after uh, doing this step, I just uh, put a mold and, uh, and pour some silicone, which this one is the viscous and, and viscous silicone that looks like, that fits like human fat. Finally, I connect the electrodes and I have the working interface. So the electrodes are connected to a tiny uh, uh, mutual capacitance sensing hardware. So that's a tiny open hardware board that we developed and that uh, where we can connect a grid of 12 uh, by 21 electrodes. So it, we can 
scale it and connect any electrode on, on that, and it's talking uh, via I2C to Arduino. So really easy to do, uh, and it's like available. Uh, and then uh, on the software side, we are getting the data, and we have uh, we have this kind of data. So we have uh, the for we have the touch and multi-touch, and we also have some some sense of depth. So here we retrieve the data at a rate of 30 frames per, per second, which is not really high, but it's enough for us to apply after some some detection. Um, it can also uh, be uh, this interface can also be placed behind the phone, and and then it's a phone skin phone case. How cool is that? Uh, uh, here it's uh, so the, the working interface behind the phone. So to detect the touch gesture, the simple and the complex touch gesture, uh, I used the simple, there is nothing special, uh, I used the uh, computer vision. So here I will give you two examples. Here are two different type of gestures. Uh, we got the data, uh, we scale it, we blur it, and then we applied blob tracking. And you can see even in the bottom that the grabbing, you can, you can clearly see the hand grabbing the, the interface. So based on that, it's easy after to create different algorithms. So now we'll talk a bit more about the use case, oh, use cases and what is possible to do with some, some human skin on, on top of devices. So for that we developed three different uh, prototypes. So keep in mind that here uh, we have the grid of electrodes behind that that is doing the sensing. So obviously it can be used as a, uh, you, we can use traditional uh, multi-touch gestures. It can be used as a touchpad. But also because it has some thickness, we can really send depth. And in, in this example, we have a joystick with a, with a Z axis, and we have really like a three-dimensional joystick. Uh, it can be used also uh, on uh, the back of the devices, and we can perform back of device uh, interaction, which has been uh, really explored in HCI. But here, there is a twist. Yeah, there is a twist. Uh, it's that we can pinch the phone. Uh, we can pinch the phone and create uh, affordances. Uh, uh, on the go. So uh, also, most importantly, that was uh, the, the motivation of our work. It was uh, the mediated communication. Because it's skin, obviously, we, we can use it as a skin proxy. So here, uh, with an, an avatar, uh, it can represent the, the arm of the avatar. And if I'm not happy, I can pinch the avatar, and, and the avatar reacts. Or another example is uh, when we communicate with text messages, uh, the, the, the touch channel uh, is not used at all. But in real life, we use actually touch to communicate with people. So in uh, this example, we, augment, uh, we augmented a text application with some natural gestures like tickling, and the tickling of the phone is then sent remotely to, uh, to another user. So, uh, to conclude a bit and to, and to sum up of, uh, these uh, interfaces, uh, so we have this kind of chunk of skin here that we put on top of a device. Uh, we worked a bit on the pigmentation to have something uh, realistic. We work also on the texture, uh, a texture that impacts the tactile uh, sensation and the realism. And uh, the interface is capable of some strain and some thickness uh, actually much more than the traditional touchpad. And of course, we have the sensing layer. But there are some, uh, there are some other aspects, other factors that we left aside, like the sweat of the skin. We, it's for future work. We, should, we want to investigate how we can put sweat on such interface. Also, uh, the hair, the human hair, because that's important. Actually, the presentation after me is going to work with hair. And also the, the, the color change and the, the blush, like because that's something we we do and we use to communicate. And if you look at this picture, you can see it's slightly different. Like the the, the, the touchpad we developed in the skin, it's like the human skin is, is more realistic. So we ask ourselves, can we go further? So that's a year a work from last year. I don't know if for some of you remember. So it's, uh, I presented Mobilim, which is an anthropomorphic device that can, that can actually perform output on the user wrist. And, and it's anthropomorphic, it's realistic, and, and, and uh, it's anthropomorphic in both in terms of shape and, and also capabilities. So I dive a bit more into the, the anthropomorphic aspect, and I created other interfaces that, that are 
that have really like a, a realistic look. And I made, uh, I, I changed a bit the color, the surface texture, which is reinforced. Also, I play with the volume of the surface. And it's now uh, an interface that looks really like, like a piece of, of, of skin and that has the same actual capabilities. So you might think it's creepy, but uh, you're not the only one. Like, and actually, actually, I've seen online like everybody is thinking it's creepy, so it's okay. I'm aware of that. But I think, I think it's great because, because this project explores uh, a possible future of, of what can be interaction. It questions also the shape of the device we have uh, and how we interact with them. And also, uh, this work opens up the discussion. Uh, does our device need a cover that feels like human skin? That, that's an interesting question, I don't know. I, I don't know if they need it, but at least I try to explore if, uh, what's happening if they are well. And thank you for your attention. I will have a demo so we'll be able to touch the interface. So I think we have time for maybe one question. And the next author might come up. Hi, thank you. I'm Nagma from USC. Um, I was wondering if you have thought about adding four sensors to this. For sensor? Yes. So actually, so the, with the mutual capacitance uh, technique and, and, and the, 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 say the, the, the yeah, what we use, we can sense somehow force. It's, it's a sense of pressure. But we could, uh, I, I wanted to do that actually, to put force sensor under the, 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 the fat layer to have like a really like sense of force. But I, we can infer the force, but not actually sense the real force right now. Any other questions? Yep. Hi. Um, so you were looking into maybe sweat and hair and texture. I didn't see temperature. Did you guys? Temperature. Yeah, I didn't put it in the slide, but temperature okay. is one of the most important factors, and that's ob obvious that we want to enter. Actually, that's funny because when I was doing the prototype, sometimes it was heating up, and it was heating up the skin, and I was like, hmm, that's, that's kind of realistic, and that was actually like a side effect, but it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the first creepy thing is like yeah. a cold, dead skin. Yeah. <laughs> also, I have another remark that if you want to go to the airport, don't put it in your pocket, the skin, because you might have problems with the security, and that's, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, let's thank the order again.